Hey there, just a quick update. I've done most of the bug fixing I could find, but I found myself re-watching that walk cycle tutorial I released before, and it made me really want to figure out how to have a smooth walk cycle using Galv's walk cycle plugin. It took way longer than I thought because I had to learn how the plugin worked, but this is what I came up with. In a lot of ways, I'm real glad I don't rely on crowdfunding or a Kickstarter, as me taking a couple of months to figure out how to implement such a tiny improvement like adding more frames to a walk cycle is not the most efficient use of my time. For comparison's sake, here's what it used to look like. The original walk cycle had three frames of animation, and the new one has eight. Now personally, I don't think having a detailed smooth walk cycle is that essential to the overall experience of a game. You know, I'm personally happy with, you know, Lisa, or One Shot, or Undertale, Yume Nikki. It's more important to nail the feelings you want to elicit from your players. But this is just something I found myself getting really curious about, and I wanted to see how Gal's plugin actually worked. So I just dove into it, half expecting myself to fail, but it actually ended up working out. So that was cool. Now, this isn't a proper tutorial, as there's way too much to explain, but in general, Galv's character sheet is laid out like this. First, you have to determine the amount of frames you want in that cycle. In my case, I have 8 frames. I put the number 8 in brackets in the file name after the percentage sign. And then from what I could tell, the plugin would interpret the sheet and divide it into half horizontally and by quarters vertically, like so. The main areas that matter are the first three divisions. This division is for the character's standing frames, or idle animation. The second division is the walking frames. And then the third division is the running frames, which is triggered when the player holds down shift. The bottom row is for diagonal frames, which I'm not using, so ignore that. But you need to account for it in the sprite sheet, so this will be left empty. To focus on these divisions, I'll start with an individual sprite and then go from there. Since I'm wanting to have 100 by 100 pixel sprites, one of these divisions will be 100 times 8, so 800 pixels wide, and then 100 times 4, so 400 pixels wide vertically. 800 by 400 is the measurement of one of these divisions or character sheets, I'm not sure how to put it. So all together, they will add up to 3200 pixels wide by 800 pixels high, with only a third of the sheet being what's actually necessary. Now, there's way too much to go into this, so I'll save that for next time. That was just a basic overview. I'd like to provide a template, like my last video, which will also take a while to create. As for the sprite sheet itself, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, was it worth it? Mm, yeah, okay, yeah, it, it was worth it. To me, it was worth it. But here are a couple thoughts. The first thought is that currently the plugin breaks the character sheets for every other character. Uh, it causes everyone else to be in this constant stepping animation. So all the character sheets need to be updated to Galv's format, as I showed previously. Unless I'm missing something. So Galv notes in the plugin description that there's a way to disable this using the plugin command, but it's not a permanent solution, and they'll start doing their stepping thing once again when the map reloads. So while I don't necessarily need to update all the characters' drawings to be as smooth as the player's sprite, that would be like way too much work, but they at least need to be remade in this new format. So the second point is, while the drow walk cycle, it was fine when referencing it for the down and the side walking animations. Um, the main problem is, because the cape blocks most of her figure in the up position, it was basically impossible to use it as a meaningful reference when drawing these new frames. So after a lot of searching and trying to figure out what else I could do, I eventually found the sprite sheet for the nameless one in Planescape Torment. He's the main protagonist in Planescape Torment, and I used that as a reference. I think I still need to figure out a way to extract the player sprites from Baldur's Gate. Like I need to really figure out how to use Near Infinity and have that extract the individual GIFs, I guess, or the PNG images. But for now, I just wanted a quick solution, so I used the nameless one. He's a lot bulkier than the Drow, but just referencing his limb position rather than his musculature or how bulky he is, uh, I felt that could work. That was just my theory. So putting this theory into practice, I drew the frames, but I think there's a noticeable difference in the arm swing for the up and down position. The down position has the arms move more subtly, like it stays at the character's hips, while the nameless one's arm swing it's like, it's like way more pronounced, I think. It's like his, 
his arms are at like a 90 degree angle. Is this important? Am I being a perfectionist? <laughs> like, I'm going crazy. I'm already hitting very minimal returns at the amount of work I'm doing, but we'll see. <laughs> Overall, I'm really glad that this was done. I always do this. I set myself these challenges because I'm curious at how certain things would look in game and whether my weird theories will even work out or if it's worth the effort. But what's done is done. And since this is all self-funded, I'm only wasting my own time and money and energy if things don't work out or if things take way too long. Cool. Now that that's done, uh, just want to talk about what I'm up to now. One thing is that I got really hung up on creating new interiors for these select buildings. Someone said that they'd really like to go into these buildings, um, even though I couldn't figure out a way to use them meaningfully. Like they, I couldn't find a way for these spaces to tie into the, uh, the overall story. But just giving the player the ability to explore these interiors, even if they don't mean anything, uh, maybe like little easter eggs, I still think would be nice. Like these buildings exist in the overall map, so it kind of implies that you'll be able to go inside, but then I just put up like, oh this door is locked, blah blah blah, in a Silent Hill sort of way. That's why I would like to spend some time um, drawing some, you know, cute interiors and just map them and I don't even know what to put in them, <laughs> but I'll figure out, I'll figure out something. That's all for now. Hope this video wasn't too scrappy. I just wanted to pump something out and just show where I'm at. That's all for now, so I'll see you next time.